for a reason, uh, they'll be able to make use of it too. So uh, I'll just do a quick introduction. So my, my name is um, Peter Pisanello. I'm here at uh, Blue Chip. Uh, I'm the product manager for all our MSP products uh, here at Blue Chip, and we have a wealth of, of uh, MSP products and tools for, for you uh, to use to help you uh, grow and uh, obviously uh, help you in your journey as an MSP. And so glad to have as one of our vendors, Ninja One, uh, and they're here to help us, to show us uh, how their product uh, will certainly benefit you as the MSP. Uh, and so I'll introduce uh, MJ and uh, Pablo, who are from Ninja um, as well as Karen, who's also from Ninja One. So I'll hand straight over to them so they can um, uh, get into it, and then we can uh, later on get into the gin tasting with uh, Garden Street. Perfect. Well, thanks, Pete. And so let me um, share my screen really quick. Perfect. And what we'll do to start, <clears throat> I'm not a big uh, PowerPoint person, but I feel like there's uh, this is uh, a lot of you might not know who Ninja is, so may as well just kind of get into it from here. So uh, Ninja One, uh, we've got a motto that we uh, simplify IT operations, and that's really what we do um, every day. Um, you'll see it through the platform. We'll do a bit of a demo for you just so that we can kind of get the feel for it. Uh, but the whole idea is just trying to simplify this complex industry that we all work in. So uh, a little bit about me. My name is MJ Robotham. I'm the uh, director of sales for APAC, uh, based in Sydney as well, too. Um, and I guess just a little bit about Ninja. And so uh, Ninja was founded back in 2013. So uh, nearly 10 years now. <clears throat> uh, you know, we're not the uh, the newest kids on the block, but uh, we're definitely quite mature. And you know, as you see the platform, you'll kind of see uh, what's going on there. Uh, but uh, this slide is actually out of date because we've got over 500 employees worldwide. Uh, we got our start in Australia back in May of last year. So uh, and we probably have about. 20 people um, in the office, so uh, making, a, making some good headways out here. Uh, but the majority of our staff actually sits either on the dev or the support side. Um, now, what that means for you is quite a lot. So um, the fact that we've got tons of developers and the fact that our uh, our founder, our CEO is founder, is our founder as well too, uh, we're actually able to offer quite a lot of new features in a relatively short manner. So we've got major releases that happen probably once every quarter. So uh, we've got other releases, like a little bit smaller, but um, still have quite a lot packed in there. Uh, this happened once every month or two, and we're constantly making uh, hot fixes, just making sure that the platform is running the way that it needs to. Now on the support side, uh, we were rated number one on support. Uh, that's across the G2 crowd, Captera, um, a couple different uh, crowd sites that are out there. But uh, biggest thing on, on our support is that we do have an average score, average CSAT score of 98. And uh, the average response time for email tickets is about 15 minutes, actually. Um, so you can either call or email us. Um, we do take our customer service very, very seriously. Um, the way that we see it is that you know we want to be partners with you you know our success or your success is going to be our success and we want to be able to help you out in, a, in any way that's possible so uh you know why why ninja you know i get, I get asked this question quite often and uh really i mean um hopefully there's uh you know there's not too too much that relates to you on this but i um, guarantee there's probably a couple on here uh that you're probably you know um, kind of thinking about but i guess if you kind of look at some of the vendors that are out there some of the legacy vendors you know they kind of got their starts when rmm wasn't really a thing uh, they kind of got their start before MSPs really knew how to actually properly monetize their service and how to actually go out to market and really make their lives easier. So when you start looking at some of the legacy uh, vendors that are out there, um, you know, the one thing that or a couple of things that I constantly keep on hearing about is just, you know, very clunky or, you know, uh, not responsive or, you know, it takes too many clicks to get through to something or the biggest thing across most of these is um, lack of support. You know, like if you're if you're running your business on one of these vendors and you really want to uh, make sure that you're, you know, up here upholding to that managed service agreement that you have with your customer, uh, you want to make sure that the vendors in your back. Right. So, um, you know, really like uh, what we hear quite a lot is that a lot of MSPs are really just fed up with just outdated uh, technology that's out there. Now, conversely, we do have other uh, newer vendors that are coming out as well, too. 
Now, these other vendors, you know, uh, they are interesting. Um, you know, they're, I don't mean that in a bad way, but um, I think the what I'm trying to say is uh, there might be a, a lack of maturity when it comes to their products. Um, one of those that so they don't really take care of the um, here and now of the products and making sure that the basic fundamental features in the product are actually up to speed. Um, it might be kind of like we're trying to rush out new features, even though the old features still properly work, right? Um, you know, with uh, newer products, you know, scalability, and as you start growing your business, like it is one that a lot of people do say that they actually outgrow some of these vendors that are out there. And that's another reason why they're starting to look at Ninja as well, too. Um, so, you know, you kind of got like both ends of the stick here, you know, really, really old, really, really new. And I feel like Ninja is kind of just right in the middle of that sweet spot right there. Now, some differentiators in between us and some of the other vendors that are out there. You know, uh, first and foremost, we are built in the cloud uh, from day dot. Uh, we host everything on AWS and we do have a local instance here in Australia as well, too. Um, you know, the, the demo site that I'll be going into is actually going to be calling into our North America demo site just because we've got an environment set up there. But you'll start seeing really quick just how snappy and how quick and easy it is to actually use. Um, which kind of goes into the next thing, ease of use. Um, throughout the whole demo, like I guarantee you, like Ninja is really, really easy. Um, I didn't have any background in uh, this particular uh, part of, um, of IT. I was uh, more on the networking side for the first 10 years of my uh, career. But for me to be able to pick up Ninja and know the ins and outs of it, I guarantee you, anyone that's using RMM before should be able to pick it up really quick and easy. Um, some things that you will notice in the demo, the single pane of glass. You know, we'll talk a lot about the automation. Um, you know, if we drive automation, I mean, that's really where uh, the bulk of your work is, right? So we'll cover a little bit of that off as well, too. Um, when you actually do bring in everything together, um, you know, all in that single pane of glass, um, you do tend to lower your total cost of ownership. Um, that's just one of those that you don't have to pay for, you know, additional licenses like Splash Software Team Viewer. Um, S Ninja actually takes those over for you. Um, you know, work efficiency for your technicians inside of just one platform. Um, it's just another kind of cost saver if you total if you look at the total cost of ownership right there. And just lastly, we do have the support, which I've kind of mentioned already as well too. <coughs> So really, Ninja, we simplify IT operations. Um, you know, I think the demo is probably going to speak quite a lot for you. Um, some things that we do include as well, too, just want to cover this off, is uh, we do have free and unlimited onboarding and support and, and, uh, and training um, throughout the duration of, of, your, uh, of, your, of your journey at Ninja. Um, so if you need to um, get trained up, you know, not only just on your onboarding session, but if you guys start expanding and you start getting new technicians and you want Ninja to train your technicians for you, that's something that we can do for you. And I guess just lastly, before we get into the demo, uh, this is what Ninja has to offer. So um, some of you actually may know, I can't believe I didn't cover this. Uh, some of you uh, might actually know Ninja as Ninja RMM, and we did do a, um, a name change back in October of last year. Um, and it was really just because we outgrew the, the RMM side of things. You know, we do offer like we do offer the RMM side, but you know the fact that we can do your patch management, we've got an IT uh, documentation tool that we've built that's uh, built directly into our product uh, to do your remote access and your daily backups. Um, these are a lot of the reasons why you know we we renamed ourselves to Ninja One because we are uh, more of a more of a platform, a unified IT platform rather than just on RMM. So um, <clears throat> with that, um, why don't we just Drill, go down into the demo and uh, kind of show you uh, what Ninja is all about. So, um, look, Ninja is a multi tenanted um, platform right here. So, uh, anytime we click on this dashboard um, kind of like tab right here, this brings us up into our multi tenant view or our global view, as we like to say. And uh, pretty much all these organizations could be your different clients right here. Now, uh, the first thing that we do is we do take a stoplight approach when it does come to the device health. So immediately right off the bat, we'll be able to see how many devices are healthy that are in green, how many need attention, and then uh, what devices are unhealthy. Now, unhealthy could be down servers. That could be a failed uh, Ninja backup job. Uh, we do file folder and image backup, just in case you're wondering. I'll kind of show you the automations on that in a second. We can see that a Hyper-V host is down. Uh, for anything yellow that needs needs attention, uh, we could have devices that have pending OS or third-party patches. Uh, there could be devices that have um, alerts for monitors that we have on those devices, uh, devices that are in maintenance mode. <coughs> they could also be um, devices that need reboots as well, too. So 
at a high level, you'll be able to know exactly what's going on on any particular organization and then do some type of actions from there. Now, uh, as you can see, uh, this little circular thing right here, these are gonna be our active jobs. The summary is just gonna be on the right-hand side over here. So these uh, actions could either be kicked off by technicians or through automations. Now, automations all sit inside of our policies. This is where we can uh, monitor for conditions. We can do um, our scheduled scripts, um, our patch management's all gonna be done there as well too, as well as our daily backups. So we'll cover all of that off in a second here, but um, the best part about Ninja is that once we have the automation set up, it's one of those that your tool is gonna be working for you and not the other way around, which I think as we all know, as business owners, that's really what we wanna do. Uh, just lastly, uh, just to kind of orientate everyone here, uh, these tabs right up top, these are going to be universal throughout the whole platform here. Um, since we are on the global page right here, these tabs are going to be for every device across every single organization. But when I do click into a particular org, uh, the tabs look more or less the same, but they're only going to be for the devices that are going to be inside of the platform or inside of this organization right here. Now, I'll kind of just drill into um, one of these devices. We'll go into this uh, AD server right here. And uh, just to kind of show you just the ins and outs of you know, what it looks like on the device side of things before we cut into the uh, automations. So um, hopefully everyone, at least by now, can kind of see the simplicity and, <clears throat> and all the visibility that you get inside of the platform. <coughs> Excuse me. Um, but um, <clears throat> as the agent does live on the device, we're actually able to pull quite a lot of um, granular information directly from this device. So we'll see our key performance indicators. We'll have a lot of that granular information right in the middle here, as you'd imagine. <coughs> and on the right hand side, we've got a list of activities that have happened on this device ever since the agent's been installed. Now, this could be any type of conditions that are met, <clears throat> any scripts that are ran, uh, any remote sessions. And um, as you can see right here, it looks like someone actually did do a remote tool right here. So we will uh, let you know what technician did anything on a device, which just gives uh, you a little bit of assurance if you do have a, a customer or a client who's um, looking to dispute anything that's actually happened on that device. Now, since this device does need attention, if I scroll down to the bottom right here, um, it looks like we do have a, uh, an alert um, on one of the monitors that we have. Uh, now, in case you couldn't tell that this was a demo account, um, this probably is the biggest demo account. <coughs> the monitor CPU utilization is less than 100%. I would hope that it is. But, you know, with Ninja, not only will we actually tell you what the issue actually is, but uh, since it is a CPU utilization um, issue right here, we can actually see the top five processes, which could be leading us to see why we're seeing this issue. Now, depending on what the alert is down below, we will have different commands right here. Since this is just a, uh, an alert, we can kind of just reset the alert just to kind of just brush it off. Uh, Ninja does have a ticketing solution as well too, where we can actually create a ticket and have our technicians track it as well too. Now up on the top up here, we've got a number of floating buttons. Um, so the first uh, button that we have is gonna be our run script. Uh, so we can run a script uh, directly from our library. Now Ninja gives you about 80 scripts right out of the box. Um, 30 or so will be on Windows, about another 30 on Mac, and then about 20 on Linux. Now, you do have the ability to either import scripts in or actually um, uh, build scripts in a script builder. We'll support Batch, JavaScript, PowerShell, Shell Script, and VBScript. And once they're in your library, you can use them throughout the whole platform, whether we're on the device level as we are right now, or if we're uh, inside of our policies and uh, we want those scripts to run on any other devices. A uh, very unique thing about Ninja is that it is really just coding in whatever those languages are. No pr proprietary languages are needed. Um, it's really just those five that I mentioned earlier. Now, just to um, show you um, kind of, uh, actually, we'll do empty recycle bin if I can type properly. Um, so as I mentioned earlier, you know, I'm calling in from our North American instance right here. But if I wanted to run a simple command on this device, um, on the right-hand side, you'll kind of see just how zippy this actually is. I know empty trash bin isn't the most uh, um, intensive thing to do, but everything will be documented right here with me actually starting the request. Uh, we'll see the action start. Everything was too quick that um, it actually so, uh, superseded the actual output of that script directly right here as well too. So uh, we'll be able to uh, quickly you know, get to all of our devices in an easy manner. Now I can also reboot the device right here. 
on a one-off basis, if I needed to scan and or apply any type of third-party or OS patches, I can do so here. <coughs> I can pop this device into maintenance mode, not only to suppress alerts on my side, but just to make sure nothing bad happens to the user who's actually on this device, reset my alerts. And this discovery job right here, since this is an AD uh, server, um, I can actually leverage my um, DC or AD DC right here to send a probe out to see what devices are on the domain that don't have the ninja agent on there and then schedule a time for it to actually uh, push that agent out to those devices. Now we do have some other tools right here where we do have the command line. So we can either do a command line or PowerShell either as a system or logged on user. Um, these next couple items right here, these are gonna be our remote access tools. Um, as I did mention earlier, we do have um, integrations with TeamViewer and Splashtop, and Ninja actually takes care of the licensing for you. So uh, really all I have to do, and I'll put my hands up right here just to show you that I am actually not doing anything at all. Um, as soon as we click into either of these platforms, the, um, the platform does pop up. You notice that I don't have to sign in or do anything at all. We get the ID and the one-time password and then automatically we're onto this device really easily. Now with either of these platforms, we will have all of the tools that are associated with it. So if I wanted to go in here and type in password, which is not the password to this device, um, you know, I can actually use any of the tools, um, uh, all of the tools that are associated with either of these platforms. So, um, uh, I guess just really quickly before I move on, just some other tools that we do have. They're going to live in this tool button right here. So um, I do have uh, user management on the actor directory side. Um, I can do the remote uh, registry, uh, take a look at the task manager in real time, uh, file browser. So if I wanted to download <coughs> a particular um, file from one device onto my device here and then pop it on another device through this platform, we can do that. And then we do have the service manager if I wanted to start, stop, or restart any services, even change the startup type as well too. So um, I guess just last, or I guess nextly, what we'll do is we'll go into our policies to get there, all we got to do is click on administration and then policies. And in here, this is where all of our policies are going to live. Now, out of the box, you will have these native policies with these houses right here. You can think about them broken up in between Windows, Mac, and Linux, and then from there, broken up in between workstations and servers. Um, the cool thing that we can do is we can also uh, create parent child relationships in between our policies. Um, this could be one of these, actually. So, we do see a bronze tier, silver tier right here. Um, so depending on whatever your managed service offering is and if you wanted to add certain features or not, such as backup for your gold tier and maybe not backup for your silver tier, um, these are things that you can automatically um, pop onto um, any device. Now, if we do go into uh, parent-child uh, relationship um, instead of our policies, you will see this inherited science right here. There's no sense in reinventing the wheel if we know we're just gonna clone everything over um, and then make small little changes. When we do make a change, you'll just see this overwritten um, little thing right here. Now, um, automations really do live under this uh, conditions, scheduled scripts, or Windows patching, third-party patching down in software, and then also backups. So think about your policies as your automation uh, tool right here. Now, uh, for conditions, I mean, uh, we can, can, we can uh, monitor for quite a lot on a device right here. Um, all of these can be super granular. Um, there are plenty that we can do, but I guess just to show you kind of, you know, uh, like a bit of like an if this, then that. Let's say I wanted to create a policy for a specific uh, Windows service. Let's say that I know I'm running Bitdefender across every single one of my devices, and I want to get a, not only alerted if the device does go down for three minutes, but maybe I want to have an action that goes alongside it as well, too. So what I can do is I can just go into our scripts, I can type in services right here, and we do have a native Windows service, which is a script that Ninja provides you. Now, since the Bitdefender, um, Bitdefender agent went down, I can have it automatically start back up right here. Now, I can add multiple scripts onto this condition right here. So if I were to have this issue pop up, we can run all of our scripts from top to bottom right here. Uh, we can send uh, notifications through many different channels, whether they're email, Slack, um, SMS, webhooks. Um, you can pretty much get any of your um, notifications to wherever you need it to go. Um, all the notifications will be sent based off the priority and severity, so we can set those up right there. And then if we if you do have um, integrations with uh, ConnectWise Manage, yeah, ConnectWise Manage or um, Autotask, um, you can also create tickets directly from this condition actually triggering as well too. 
And if you're running the Ninja ticketing solution, we can have automations which can automatically open up a ticket. And if this were to reset and then happen again, we can append to that ticket. So a couple of different things that we can do there. Now scheduled scripts. I mean, it sounds exactly like what it is, but automation is always key. And I really do love this one right here. Uh, set up new devices. Uh, you know, automation can save a lot of time. So if you think about this bit right here as provisioning new devices as you onboard new clients, um, hopefully this just saves a little bit of time. Now, the way that we do this, we have the schedule to set run, or set to run, run once immediately, which means that once the agent's installed on the device, then it's going to kick off all of these scripts on the right hand side. So just um, you know, saving you some time on the provisioning side of things. Now, while we do have a lot of different schedules that we can do here, you can run you know maybe like a weekly uh, backups or a weekly uh, maintenance script, uh, you know, re weekly reboot script, um, you know, a couple of different things that we can do in here. But automation is really what will save you time in the long run. Now, uh, patching is probably one of the biggest things that I guarantee you every single one of us at Ninja talks about every single day. Um, Hopefully no one here is using WSS um, and you guys are using something, but hopefully I'm able to show you something a little bit cleaner and nicer here. So for our Windows patching, we do have um, firstly our reboot options. So, you know, we'll have a specific uh, or specific actions if the user is logged in, where we do give the ability to actually force reboot after X amount of attempts right here. And we can, we can even pop in a reboot dialog right here. Options do look a little bit different if a user is not logged in. But pretty much after that, what we can do is we can um, uh, pop in our scan schedule and update schedule. So scan schedule is clearly when we're going to scan for patches and update is going to be for when we want to push it out. Now Ninja does give you the ability to automatically wake up a system as well. And uh, once we do have all of that, a newer feature that kind of got rolled out in the last month or two is this uh, pre and post script about our execution. So let's say I wanted to run a script to disable all of the power settings to make sure the device doesn't uh, go to sleep once the uh, patches are going out. And then maybe after the patches go out, maybe I want to run a script that re-enables those uh, power settings to make sure everything's going to look good. So those are some things that you can do there. Unfortunately, it's not a native script. It would be something that you'd have to pop in yourself. Now, everything down below right here maps directly over to Microsoft. And the cool thing is that for all four of these, um, all of these important and optional packs and updates, and even your driver and feature updates, uh, you do have three different options for, you, what you, for what you can choose for. So you can either choose to auto approve, auto reject, or pop it into manual setting. If anything is under manual, then I go back over to my dashboard right over here. Um, if I were to go to OS patches and then go under pending, this will show us all of our available patches right here. Um, if we did have a uh, actual Microsoft uh, patch right here, uh, we can uh, click on this KB article. This will link us directly over to Microsoft just so we can actually check to see what it is that this patch is trying to address. And if everything did look good, we can actually click on that patch and we can either approve it across our policy either by the KB or patch ID. Now, if we didn't want it, we could reject it. And if we do reject any patches, they'll just show up underneath our rejected bucket right here. If we do need this at a later time, we can reapprove these and these would get sent out on the next update schedule uh, for that policy right here. But more importantly, we'll be able to see what's installed and what's been failed as well too. Now um, with Ninja, we can preemptively block or approve patches. So if we wanted to uh, pop in a specific KB number right here, description, and choose approve or reject, this will override any of the settings that we have on our policies right over here. Um, as of today, we do not have um, any type of uh, rollback for patches, um, but that is imminent. And I guess I'll kind of just use these last couple of minutes right here um, just to show you our features roadmap, uh, because as I mentioned earlier, we've got quite a lot coming down the pipeline right here. So. Uh, this is uh, going to be in our next release. Um, I'm hoping for this month, but I don't know exactly when it's going to be coming out. But as you can see, there's going to be quite a lot in this next release right here. Um, going into development, um, I think rollback of patching is right here. So I want to say in the next three to six months, uh, that should be coming out here. But I mean, as you can tell, there's quite a lot that we're um, looking to uh, implement inside of our our, uh, our platform here. And even if we go into plan, we really start breaking down what is it um, on a per product base that Ninja offers. <coughs> whether it's on the um, RMM side right here, whether it's on our patch management, um, our backups, 
um, there's quite a lot that we're going to be rolling out here. So um, the best way I like to think about Ninja is that if you were to go with Ninja today, uh, you would be purchasing at us at, a, at our worst uh, because we're going to be having a lot coming down the pipe, which uh, should hopefully make your lives a lot easier and even more um, uh, efficient as well, too. And uh, keep an eye out for uh, MDM as well, too. This is a product that's currently under development. Um, but really where we get all of these features is from our partners going in and submitting a new idea right here. Any idea that's submitted does get sent directly over to our product management team. And from there, they're able to um, uh, prioritize and pop everything um, into the developmental queue. So a lot of our platform was built by our partners and um, you know we're, we're looking to do um, that same mythology uh, moving forward as well too. So um, I think I'll cut the uh, the demo short there. Uh, I don't want to bore everyone with um, any of the um, uh, reports. Uh, there is quite a lot of functionality, and I didn't I don't think I've scratched the surface on Ninja right there. Um, but yeah, we'll kind of uh, stop right there. <coughs> so um, I guess I'll pause there for any questions, um, and we'll kind of uh, go from there. Any questions from anyone on the all good? Yeah, I, I, I uh, just have questions on um how does the um uh how does the backup system work? Uh, thanks, Andrew. Uh, yeah, so just Kieran, a question on the backup. Yeah, Kieran, do you want to uh, step in and talk about how the backup works? Sorry, I was on mute there. Um, I can do that. Just give me a moment. So we provide both file and folder and full image for Windows. Um, and for Mac, we do file and folder right now. So I'm just going to share my screen quickly. So with a Ninja, if you were to have our backup set up from this global overview dashboard, you'd also be able to pop over here to see the overview history, what's running and the usage as well. But looking at the overview, you'll be able to see what customers are using how much data. You'll also be able to see what that split is between image and file and folder. So with this here, all of our data is pulled across all of our um, all of the clients within the dashboard. So if customer A's computer went over, that could be used elsewhere amongst the other companies. Um, but as you drill down to the different dashboards, this backup will follow you. So if you go to an organization overview, you can now see the overview for backup and you can now see the devices and how much data they're using each. When you actually go down to the device level now, and I could go to these, but I'm going to go to device overview as it's familiar. On this page now, you have the ability to see an overview, but up here as well, you can actually manage the backups. So you could restore it from here. You also have the ability to run a plan, generate the key, and you would also be able to download the image restorer from here as well. Um, if we pop into our administration where the setup takes place, you'll firstly need to add it within the apps for data protection. And the settings for it will be spread across your policy as well as your organization where you'll be able to select the devices. So within the policy here, we have backups. We can add a plan, again, file and folder and full image. Here, you'll be able to put the plan name, the schedule, you have your power options. You can attempt to wait the device, run immediately if, if missed. And then you've got your versions or revisions here, depending on how much retention you guys need. And then you can choose to also back up to our AWS S3 buckets in Sydney. Um, and you can also utilize a local only or hybrid approach where you could have a local NAS. You can select your folders here. 
your filters, and then your advanced exclusions and inclusions. On the image side, you'll actually be able to see basically the same, except now you can actually do partitions. Say you wanted to do just a C drive, you could do that as well. But similarly, you've got your revisions here, or versions, power options, and schedule. So lastly, we'll pop over to the organizations. And within here, you will be able to access the network storage. John's NAS will be our default in this instance. And we can come to backups now. And we can actually select the devices we want to be backed up based on whatever plans they have under the policy. We can throttle bandwidth and select default network storage will pull us back to this page here. Do you guys have any more questions around that? Uh, that's okay for now. Thanks. Sweet. Excellent. Thanks, Karen. Thanks for walking us through that too. Are there any other questions from anybody else uh, from the demo or just uh, the presentation? From Ninja One, anybody else had have questions? All good. Well, if you do, if you do think of any uh, uh, um, during the week, or just uh, feel free to to reach out to myself and the Ninja One team, and we'd be more than happy to answer any of the questions uh, that you may have. And thank you, uh, MJ, for for doing that presentation um, on Ninja One. And and um, we're just gonna also, um, MJ, if you have that a question to ask the audience. Uh, we'll give away a fifty dollar voucher just around uh, what we heard from um, Ninja One because I'm sure we all uh, appreciated uh, that how it can help us simplify our IT operations and really improve our efficiency, our security with the automation, visibility, and things like that, and uh, also ticking the boxes in there when it comes to the all important essential eight. So um, definitely a great tool to have in the fold. So maybe. Uh, MJ, if you come up with a question, and um, we'll give away a $50 a voucher for the person who can answer it. Absolutely. So, um, look, we'll do a, a little bit more of a, uh, a technical one, um, and I may have said it once, but um, how many native scripts does Ninja give you out of the box? This will cover your Windows, Mac, and Linux devices. 80. Does anyone remember? That is a correct answer right there. Um, so who was it? This, is that uh, Andrew Taylor? <laughs> who was that? No, that was me. <laughs> Vass. Uh, oh, oh, there you go. Yeah. Vass. Thanks, Vass. That's right. perfect. How do I know it'd be Vass? One yourself and all over it. <laughs> <laughs> uh, very, good, very good. Very good. That's super stuff. Can, uh, all right. Well, now, email and thank the, you, uh, guys. Chat, uh, we'll be able to uh, get that, that, uh, that gift certificate over to you shortly. Off to you. Excellent. Thanks for that. We'll now hand over to Garden Street. Are you? I'm sure you all got your wonderful package from them. Uh, can't see it, unfortunately, but um, it's got all the goodies in there for our next part of our walk through the gin with Garden Street. So we'd like to uh, invite them on and we'll get straight stuck into that. And we'll also have another little quiz, uh, not quiz, but uh, a giveaway another $50 voucher uh, with a bit of fun based on the gin and tasting. So uh, make sure you also uh, listen, listen in as the guys walk us through the, uh, the gin. Awesome. So we'll hand over to Garden Street. <laughs> no worries, thanks so much. Um, I'll just do a quick introduction. Um, my name's Audrey and I work for Garden Street Gin Club. Um, I work in events and social media and in the warehouse. Um, we're lucky enough this afternoon to have the team from Imbu Distillery um, who made the wonderful gin packs that you have got this afternoon. Um, so basically a little bit about us at Garden Street before I hand over. So we're a gin subscription club. So every month we feature a different distillery in Australia um, and then we feature a different one of their gins. Um, and then subscribers will get boxes every one, two or three months. Um, and then we have gift boxes and all that sort of thing. And then we do some events like this one. Um, and then Inview Distillery, um, who are also located in Melbourne, 
uh, featured in the past in a couple of our boxes um, and we've got the tasting pack with them which um, are great gifts um, but also perfect for tastings like this one. Um, so I will hand over to the team who will go through a little bit of a tasting. Um, feel free to ask questions as we go, but um, hopefully you've all received your packs um, and I'll hand over to them now. Hey, how are you going? Uh, Mick and this is Nikki from Imbue. Um, behind us you can see our little uh, little uh, stainless stainless steel. <laughs> <laughs> our little shiny, shiny copper. copper. Still, that's 970 litres still. So it's produced all the gins that you uh, have today. And uh, yeah, so I, I, plug it in. Uh, that should be fine. I guess we should start to uh, start with a journey. So journey is a London dry style. So that's the one with the push bike on it. London dry style with apples, munchies and juniper. It's absolutely delicious. Have a sniff of it first. And then if you mix it with the apples, and the uh, Mediterranean, it's uh, yeah, it goes all right. Uh, let me know if you've got any questions about that one. So we started about five years ago in the distillery. We uh, I, I'd show you, but she's over there uh, with our original still. It's uh, Australian made. Both of our stills are Australian made stills. One's from Perth, which is our first still. And we've called her Sunshine, and then our second, our second still is made in New South Wales. It's the one that's behind us at the moment. That's made in Griffith, yeah, by from Burns. So that was uh, quite nostalgic when that came through. It was very, very exciting, very, very exciting. So um, hopefully uh, you're all taste. You've got your glasses ready, and you're all tasting your gin, as uh, God knows I am. <laughs> Audrey, where's yours? I'm not seeing your one. <laughs> I know I wasn't organised this afternoon. I'll have one after. <laughs> no, that's terrible. <laughs> so with the journey, apple, uh, Muntries and uh, Muntries are a native cranberry in south coast of Victoria and South Australia. And they have the same flavour profile as the Pink Lady Apple and the juniper berries. So we've thrown them in there because they are an indigenous, an indigenous fruit. And we thought, uh, why not? Because we can, so we do. <laughs> and I, we think that tastes quite nice. So you'll get a very, it's very juniper forward, but unlike a lot of London dries, it is a little bit sweeter than most London dries. And that's completely because that's how we like it. It's uh, like it or lump it, that's how we like it. So that's how we've made it. And yeah. 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 So I don't know if you got a chance to taste to have a sip on its own, but then mix it with the uh, Mediterranean tonic to make a longer drink. Good way to have it. But um, yeah, I guess we'll move on to the next one. You've got in your pack would be the Suburban. Probably can't see that. Can't see, can't see. It's a big um, bottle. There we go. <laughs> so they're the big brothers of the, yeah. the little packs that you get. So this one here, you ha you'll see on the label. Oh, there we go. There we go. It's so there's uh, it's very that uh, 1980s nostalgia for our suburban gin. It was our very first gin that we launched, and it's all about the things that land care wants to get rid of. So we use dandelions, prickly pears, wild fennel, sunflower seed, and when we're foraging the prickly pears and the dandelions and the uh, and the fennel, we make sure that we're not uh, going anywhere where kangaroos can have a poo. We make sure it's very clean. <laughs> Uh, but it's yeah, it's all about sustainability for us. So we forage what we can, but it's also adding that kind of people see these these things around these amazing uh, botanicals around. They don't know what to do with them. So we just love to kind of add that that bit that bit to it. Well, yeah, make the use of things that are lying around in the backyard. Um, so you'll have the cappy dry tonic to go with that one. And I believe some dried grapefruit as a garnish. So it does, um, the flavour just matches really nicely with the botanicals in that gin. That's the one I've got, here, I've got right now. I don't have a garnish, so I forgot to get a garnish. Hopeless. <laughs> uh, if anyone's got any questions, just let us know. We, um, yeah, more than happy to answer anyone's questions. I'm too far to actually, if you're typing them, I can't read them. So we'll work it out. Speak up. <laughs> just speak up. 
speak up and we'll answer the questions that way. Um, yeah, so the difference between a, a London Dry gin and a contemporary gin. So a London Dry, you should be tasting the juniper up front. Contemporary gin, so our suburban gin is contemporary, and it's more about the things that we've added to the gin instead of actually being about the juniper. So juniper still has to be the highest botanical in the gin to call it gin. That's, that's one of the underpinning rules around the world but you're not going to taste the juniper straight away. So with the Suburban, you kind of taste, you know, you can taste the fennel, you can taste the, a little bit of the, the tongue tie. Dandelion, the blackberry. dandelion, the blackberries. So the dandelion had this beautiful, like sweet corn note to it, which we really like. And the blackberries are a bit of a subtle, subtle flavor. You might not taste it as much when it's mixed with tonic, but I find it still kicks, kicks in there. And if you mix that one with either in this case here, it's grapefruit, but you can mix it with cucumber. Cucumber works really well, but it's really hard to post cucumbers. They just don't hold up very well. <laughs> just so, just saying, it's like... And they're hard to dehydrate. Yeah, they're hard to dehydrate. You end up with this cucumber that's like this big, this continental cucumber that's this big, and it becomes like this big, and it looks like something we should mention. So, <laughs> can't go there. Yes, 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 yes. Who brought you? Who brought you? <laughs> Anyway, um, maybe move on to the next one. <laughs> Let's get <laughs> dig out of that hole. Um, so the next one will be the barrel aged. So the exact same gin that you've just had, uh, but we have put it into a pure barrels, the Australian sherry barrels. So that's why it will have that lovely colour, the smokiness that it gets from the barrel. Does make give it a bit of a nutty flavour. Mate. So you can just have that one on its own. You don't have to mix it with the soda water that you've been given, but the slice of uh, dehydrated orange will be great. And a bit of soda water, it's like Mickey Mouse. Does open it up a bit if you don't like that whiskiness. Soda water will cut through that. We, we when we're our barrel age came around because when we launched uh, in 2000. 18, early 2018, we we wanted to launch with two products. And I, I was like, I can't launch with one product. Who does that? What's that sort of thing? So I was like, okay, no worries. So we threw some in a barrel just for shits and giggles. And I've got some really funny photos uh, really early on in our social media streams that have me toting around Tasmania with these two 20 litre barrels. Uh, I literally convinced the Coopers to sell them to me because normally there's a lead time of like three or four months on a barrel. And I, I convinced them. I said, come on, you know you want to. And I said, I'll pay you cash. So anyway, next thing I'm driving away with these <laughs> two barrels. And we threw some of the suburban gin in there and it was really fun. But they were bourbon barrels and they were whiskey barrels. So it was very different from what we're doing now. We've tried bourbon barrels, whiskey barrels, brandy barrels. And what? Port barrels, port which barrel? Nikki and I actually love. Oh, <laughs> we love the port barrel. Love the port barrel. And it's we we settled on this the sherry barrel because we really really like what it did to the suburban. It actually has this really unique sweetness to it, uh, but doesn't really take away from it. It's in there for about six months, and we Solera we've got six six barrels with our uh, suburban gin at the moment. So there's we literally have three, and then another three, and we kind of pull from three, and then after that's kind of exhausted out, then we go from the next three and it's been, it's around six months that it's in the barrel for. So we try not to push it over that edge where it's uh, it's too whiskey-esque or too kind of bourbon-esque. We, we love keeping it that softer note. So it's a little bit barrel-y, but a little bit sweet, but a bit yum. And... We still want you to be able to tell there's juniper in there. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, yeah. It's, it certainly brings on the slight different, yeah. And, and the it. it's, it's interesting. It's nice. Yeah, we actually took out uh, we took out the agricultural society, which is I I feel the best best award in Australia, uh, only because we took out trophy <laughs> for for that one in uh, <laughs> last, year. last year. So uh, it was voted that it was Australia's best barrel aged gin. I, mm. I I do agree with them, but I'm a bit biased in that. So. <laughs> But uh, yeah, it's good. Just have it yeah. over ice. It makes an absolutely cracking old fashioned. So don't worry about opening up the whiskey. Just use the barrel aged gin. Have that. Uh, yeah, it goes really, really well. So yeah, definitely. It is good. 
give it a nudge. Or a hot toddy. So the next one we're going to show you shortly, not straight away, but soon, <laughs> is the elixir. So if you have the suburban gin and the elixir together as a hot toddy in the evenings, it's just like, yeah, not tonight. It's too nice. The weather's beautiful in Melbourne today. I don't know where you're all coming from, but yeah, Mel Mel Melbourne's pretty shit hot today. Don't ask me about Saturday. It's going to go to crap, but that's fine. That's Saturday's problem. That's not today's problem. <laughs> uh, any any time's good for a nightcap. Don't worry. Hot, cold, so any night's good for a nightcap. So I good. say that to I say that to Mel all the time, and she's like, "Yeah, nah." <laughs> Mel's my wife. She's hilarious. She's about she's about this tall, and she's a barrel of laughs. She's she's so much fun. She's fit me. <laughs> but she yeah she doesn't she doesn't enjoy beverages every night. I don't know why. Likes to keep healthy, mate. I keep healthy. I'm healthy. <laughs> <laughs> Look at my glow. <laughs> anyway, from the nightcap. The nightcap, exactly. It's the, the night. It's the nightcap that does it. It just makes you just a little bit. Yeah. Yeah. It just makes you sleep so much better. <laughs> With a smile. That's it. Smile. That's it. Mm -hmm. um, all right. So. I think you've got a new best friend, Nick. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, the next one. Are we ready for the next one? No? No? Yeah? No? Uh, I think so. Yeah? Uh, the next one is, is it's really good. So that's our elixir. I'm going to come all the way in. Oh, there we go. So there's a, if you open the bottle and have a bit of a sniff, uh, there's a couple of reasons why we call it the elixir. Uh, I think once you try it, you'll probably see that. Uh, I can't remember. What do we do it for? <laughs> No, that's I not true. I believe you and Mel were not oh. feeling that oh, well. Oh, look at that. And you had colds. And Mel went for honey lemon tea. But and I always corduroys with whiskey. Gin. No, I like corduroys with whiskey. Whiskey, whiskey. And, yeah, it smells so amazing. It, it's crazy good, right? And this, I, once again, I'm biased. It's, it's <laughs> So honey, lemon, vanilla. If you hold the bottle upside down before you give it a bit of a shake, there's a hope of black flex. We did stuff up on the batch, so you shouldn't have black flex in it. No, that's not true. <laughs> it's meant to have black flex in it. They are vanilla. And it's got raw honey, raw Victorian honey. We do use some of our own honey, but our poor little bees have struggled a little bit lately. So that's, we do. Well, it's just not enough of them. It's just not enough of them. We don't have enough little bees. Uh, but it's all Victorian honey. We use some from Mornington. We use some from uh, around our area as well. So we've got a great selection of friends who help us with that supply of honey. Uh, have this one with the soda water, with the cappy. Happy soda water. It's crazy terrible. I don't even know why we put it in a bottle. <laughs> I'm not sarcastic at all today. <laughs> so, hey, that one is really nice. Had it, add it cup of tea in the morning, add it to your champagne in the evening, add it to your ice cream, add it to your granola in the morning if you do a night shift. No stress, no judgment. It's Yeah, it goes all right. It's, we, we joke it's the all-day gin because there's actually not a single meal that you can't kind of some way segue this into. Yeah. And yeah. That'd be great, be great on vanilla ice cream. It's amazing. Yeah. Yeah, it goes really well on vanilla ice cream. Yeah, yeah. Nick, Nikki's, uh, Nikki and Luke constantly have bottles in their freezer. <laughs> well, because I add it to my champagne for a champagne cocktail. So yes, it's keep it cold in the fridge or freezer. Works really well. It's beautiful. Yeah, it goes right. We haven't tried to barrel age that one. It's just no point. It's it's just where it needs to be. <laughs> mm. Yeah. But definitely you could try the Suburban Gin and the Elixir, mix them together and make a hot toddy. You're going to have a hot toddy, you're going to have a cold toddy, you're going to have any kind of toddy. It, it just those two together work really, really well. Yeah, the barrel. This would have been, this, this would have been amazing for cold and flu season. Oh, well. I, I actually joked at the start of Corona, and it was probably a little bit a little bit too early into the mix that it, uh, I got a phone call from Donald Trump wanting 300 million bottles of it, but uh, yeah, it's probably still a bit too early to tell it. <laughs> or you just rolled her eyes at me. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah. That's, but it. it's, uh, That's good. Been very helpful. It's one of my after, favourites. After some gin events where we were talking all day. Um, the elixir is very soothing on a sore throat. I can definitely mm. vouch for that, yes. Mm. It goes right. 
So did anyone have any questions? Need to know anything else about the, the gins or the distillery or the distilling process? I can say anything. I can, I can waffle for hours. I love this thing. <laughs> No. No. <laughs> well, if any, no questions? Are, if any of you are in Melbourne, um, we don't actually have a cellar door at the distillery, but we do have a lovely tasting room in Ivanhoe called Wanda North. Um, it is a lovely little um, space cocktail bar where you can go in and do a tasting flight of our other gins. We actually do have six in the range. We've also got a vodka. We're soon to release brandy, a Pinot brandy, so you'll be able to pop in there and have and um, taste those, but also Mel does some amazing cocktails and you can even have a cheese platter and some lovely little nibbles. So, um, yeah, yeah, put that down for a for date night. Great place to go. Yeah, definitely. What, what was it called again, sorry? It's called Wander North. Wander so, North. Yeah, it's, um, it, it's in Ivanhoe. It's about 150 metres from the train line, so there's no issues with driving anywhere. And oh, nice! A little twenty-seater, twenty-seater cocktail bar slash. Oh yeah. Yeah, it's it's pretty easy. A lot of people, what they love to do is book the whole place out for a, a function. It, mm. It's just a cool little space. We are going to open up at some point, hopefully in the near future, uh, our tasting room at the distillery. But um, that is a working process. It's a working progress. <laughs> <laughs> uh, we we're getting there. We're getting there. We're getting there. So. Yeah, we do. Yeah, we've got whiskey. If you join our socials, we've got whiskey coming along. We've got some that's uh, three and a half years old so far. I'm just too stubborn to release it. Uh, we've got some beautiful bourbon coming along, which is very corn focused, uh, very using ex gospel barrels, which is also a Melbourne distillery. That's, um, yeah, that's terrible. It's mm. terrible. Yeah. <laughs> it's a tough life. It is a tough life. Yeah. Yeah. We get we get paid to enjoy alcohol. It's terrible. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that, that would be hard. That would be hard. A bit like mm. Audrey's job. <laughs> All the tastings you have to do, Audrey, it must be really horrible. <laughs> yeah, it's awful. So bad. <laughs> so bad. <laughs> yeah. So, just a question from me, just in case we do want more of this stuff. Just in case, how do we how do we get a hold of it? All right, so you can What's either, the there's two ways. You can either jump on the Garden Street website and you can order directly from them or you can jump on our own website, mm -hmm. which is in beautistillery.com. So just look on the back of the bottle and that'll lead you to the website, I think, unless I'm, no, it does. Oof, God. Yeah, it's on there, it's on there. Woo. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> it's like, hang on, I do remember that one. Uh, yeah, so jump onto that and if you use the, the Code FF no ship. We will not charge you for shipping on anything that you buy on our website because we're such nice people. So FF no ship. And uh, yeah, so we we've got some fun stuff coming really soon. But yeah, definitely at Garden Street. We may if you ask in your local bottle shop, uh, that's the best way to go about getting us local to where you are. Uh, we love it when people ask their local places and then they give us a call and say, hey, we've been asked three times by this one person. <laughs> uh, and we're like, yeah, no worries, we'll be there. That's <laughs> uh, good. MJ, yeah, during your presentation product. there, you had a bit of a tickle in the throat, just a, a bit of a cough. I think huh. the uh, Alexa might, might come in handy in the office. Well, that might be a, uh, yeah. a no caps in there, Pablo. <laughs> Should have had that at the start. It was sort of there. I know. I know. <laughs> it's, not, it's not tea, it's hard tea. <laughs> yeah. It's just good. We'll just say that. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> yeah, we're not, Very we're nice. Not, we're not shit at what we do. <laughs> just saying. <laughs> no. yeah. Do a good job. That's yeah. really good. I, any any other questions from anyone uh, about what we've tried? All right, I'll just uh, sorry. I'll just uh, just uh, just as a, a giveaway uh, for another fifty dollar on this fun side that we've had. I guess uh, in terms of making that nightcap, 
Which two products do you use? The all important question. Oh my God. No, sorry, you can't answer from the you just really has to be from the audience. What are the two products? You remember? If not, we're gonna we, have to taste them again. Elixir and the suburban from iron. Is that correct? I think it was yes. James. Hooray. Correct. So fifty dollars. Hooray. Gotta remember that one. Yay. It's a good one. Well, well just done. Throw All right, it in so. the microwave. Just mix them both together, throw in the microwave 30 seconds, you're good to go. Dash of hot water. <laughs> <laughs> microwave might kill oh, yeah. I guess I guess you better add a bit of hot water, okay. I, you don't have uh, to. James. <laughs> James, if you just type your email address in the um, chat, that way Jenica will make sure she'll get your fifty dollar voucher yes, across to you. Sounds so, good. Um, yeah, no, it's been really good and informative, and and definitely enjoyed tasting all the different gins. Um, thank you so much for walking us through the the different different types and where they sit. Um, definitely, definitely different and interesting. So. Um, yeah, I, I certainly personally enjoy that. Um, yeah, a any other questions from the floor? Anyone? For the guys while we still got them? All good. All right, well. Thanks everyone. Thanks to our winners of, of the, the vouchers and, and really thanks to uh, uh, Ninja One for putting this on for, for us as well. We really, really appreciate their support and not only having such a great product uh, for us uh, to to uh, to uh, show and demonstrate to the MSPs, um, but uh, uh, thank you so much for, for putting this on and supporting us. Uh, we really appreciate that. And thank you to Imbune Distillery for, for, for walking us through all the different gins and having a bit of and fun this afternoon going through that. So uh, thank you to everyone. Thanks for joining us. And like I said, if you do have any questions around Ninja One, um, feel free to reach out to myself and my team at msp at bluechip.com.au. We'll be more than happy to assist you on, on that and, and answer any questions that you do have. And, and remember as well, uh, Ninja One, in terms of uh, support and onboarding, it's all free. So. Uh, terms of getting you all up and running and 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 going um you know it, it's it's very very easy to do uh and the team will be there to help you through that whole whole process and if you're migrating as well uh, uh they'll, they'll support you through that as make it as simple as possible so um thank you to everyone thanks for joining us today and uh we hope you enjoyed it and uh yeah we'll be in touch and uh feel free to reach out to us and we'll let you awesome. enjoy thank your you. evening, everyone. And uh, thank, thank you, you for, for being a part of this. Very good. Right. Have a great one. Cheers. Thanks, Audrey. Thank Cheers. you, everyone. Cheers. Thanks, guys. Have, have a great one. Have a good night. Cheers. Thank, thank you. you again. Thank you. Bye for now. Bye.